First, I would like to welcome all of you, especially our noble daughters and sisters in Islam, because this is class for them, even though we have a few brothers that attend Jazakumullah Khairan. We're still reading from this book, at tahdhir min mukhalafat taqa'u fiha nisa Warning against uh, certain mistakes that some Muslim women fall into. Some Muslim women, they fall into. And, and how important this because those who they are guilty with any of this, because keep in mind, none of us is perfect. We all have some issues here and there, okay? So those amongst you, noble sisters and daughters, if you're struggling with anything, alhamdulillah, at least you know what's wrong. The doctor can only prescribe the good medicine once they know what's wrong with you. If they don't know what's wrong with you, even if they give you the medicine, they may not going to work. So it's good to know what's wrong with us, and we try our best to correct it. Uh, the last point we mentioned is that it is strictly forbidden to... Uh, it was a point pertaining to pictures and statues and idols. Statues and idols and pictures. So for us Muslims, it is strictly forbidden to hang pictures on the walls. And this is something that quite few Muslims they are guilty of. Sometimes they go to some Muslim families and then you see pictures of their families, grandparents, parents, families, children, grandchildren, all over in the kitchen, in the living room, and some they have it on their desk at work, and the like. And this is not permissible to hang those pictures on the walls, nor is it permissible to have statues. Some of the people, they want to decorate the house, and then they bring statues of tigers and whatever, elephants and dolphins and maybe even so-called angels and they never seen angels. And they decorate, whether inside or whether outside. That stuff is not permissible, okay? If any of us uh, didn't know, alhamdulillah, now you know. And it will be easy to change those things, okay? No. The next question محارب التعدد الزوجات وجعل من عدد الزوجات من الخائنين من الخائنين لزوجته ومن الذين ارتكبوا جريمة فادحة في حقها Likewise some women they fight polygyny they look at Allah سبحانه وتعالى first of all let us say Allah سبحانه وتعالى he's the one who legislate that for the man to marry up to four women. But with condition, this is not for a play and games. There are certain conditions if they are fulfilled. So no woman should have a problem with this. Here is the, where the mistake comes. You find some women, they hate this. And they automatically, whenever they heard that a man marry another woman, or three or four, they say that man is a bad man and he's cheating and he's, he's not a good person because he's harming his wife, the first one. Hmm? Some, they even go, they say that's a crime. A man who marry another woman, that's a crime. Hmm? Perpetrated. That's Allah, salam al Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, ta'ala, answering this question pertaining to those women who hate or dislike what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. He said, لا يجوز للمسلم أن يكره ما شرعه الله ينفر الناس منه. It is not permissible for the Muslim to dislike what Allah legislates and to repel the people and to, to speak bad about it. لأن هذا يعتبر ردة عند الإسلام because this is considered apostasy from the deen of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ذلك بأنهم كرهوا ما أنزل الله فأحبط أعمالهم 
Since they dislike what Allah has revealed, Allah made their deeds void and nullified. So the Sheikh he says, Al Amr Khatiya, this is a very serious matter and very dangerous one. For men or women to believe that, because not just the women, sometimes you find the father of the woman, he's like, he make it a condition and if, 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 if his son-in-law wants to marry another woman, he's like, that's haram, akhi, you can't do this. This is not, uh, we're in the 21st century, what are you talking about? Don't oppress my daughter, and, subhanAllah. And that's actually, we shouldn't do this. This is, we're not this, we're not barbarians with this, subhanAllah. The Sheikh has said this is a very, very dangerous matter. And what is the reason that makes some Muslims who believe in Allah, they believe in the Quran, and there are ayats in the Quran that talks about this. They believe in Muhammad is the messenger of Allah Sallallahu But where is the problem? Why they hate this? Why they don't hate the Salat? Why they like Ramadan? They don't hate fasting. They don't hate Sadaqah. You see? They hate pork. They hate alcohol. They hate zina. But why they will hate some? Oh, it's good. Hating pork, hating zina, hating stealing. That's haram. That's what Allah SWT said. Stay away from these things. But why they want to put this one, ta'addu the zawjat, in the same category? Why? Why they want to hate something that Allah has made law for, subhanAllah? Yeah, I mean, it's always some women. I'm not going to say that all women like it and they're cool with it. Well, maybe many women don't. They're not cool with this, but they should not fall into this mistake. Now, I'm having certain feelings is one thing. A woman, yeah, some women, alhamdulillah, she she tell her husband, look, if you want to marry another woman, just do it the right way, brother. Just do it for the right way that's pleasing to Allah. Fulfill your rights. I don't want you to harm yourself. But many women, they don't. They like, uh, they don't want to hear it. But even if they have that feeling, which they shouldn't, but they only normal, this, they, they only human, they should never ever fall into this mistake and dislike or hate what Allah legislates, okay? But why they fall into this? The Sheikh he says because they are influenced by the kuffar who try to repel the people away from Islam by casting doubts these doubts that are taken and acted upon by the laymen and the ignorance among the Muslims who don't know the hikmah and the wisdom, the beautiful wisdom behind the legislation. Allah legislates everything for a reason and there is a beautiful wisdom behind it, including ta'addud al-zawjat, including when Allah SWT legislates for the men to marry up to four women. Because there is a great maslaha benefit for women before even the men themselves and for the society. Now, especially when you find in the societies there is like more women than men. So what are they going to do, those women? Hmm? They're going to turn to each other and zina and this and adultery and... And especially in society, they call modern society like this one in America, Europe, when you find like, usually by statistic, there is more women than men. Let's say they are in equal, 50-50, which actually statistics say they are ahead a little bit. There is more women than men. Okay? And how many <laughs> huh? from Qawmulot, from those men? From those 50 or 48 percent men, hmm? how many, uh, what do they call them? Gays. Those who have no interest for women. Maybe like 10 percent or so. All right? <laughs> and how many men incarcerated? Huh? Maybe like 7 percent of the population or something. Huh? And those who go to war and die. So now what left like a great percentage of women, they have nobody to marry. 
So now they want to make something halal, haram, and allow her to cheat with those who are married. They're like, no problem. But for her to have a husband who will take care of her, and she doesn't have to work, she doesn't have to worry about bills, he will take care of her, and he will be there for her, and she doesn't have to worry that he's going to leave her for somebody else. Well, she doesn't have to go and like worry about, okay, uh, subhanallah. Because if she's doing it to that man, another woman is going to do it to him too. And then they start competing and they, have, they live in that filthy cycle. No tranquility, no peace of mind, no stability. That's why you find a woman end up with four, five, six children from different men who don't pay nothing. Men who disgrace her, they tell, that's not even my son. That's not you, I don't know. She's like, no, no, that's you. He's like, I don't know, who you, be, you know, who you, who you been doing? What you been doing? Now, for those who really wants to know if this is the father, they have to humiliate themselves on a national TV, on a Maori Povich show, right? Huh? <laughs> you know. And even though a woman facing four men, still the tests say none of them is the, the father. It's a big problem, a dilemma. But Islam has saved the woman from all of this nonsense. Hey now. The Sheikh Fawzan, I go back to the Sheikh statement, he says, فَالْوَاجِبْ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمَ أَنْ تَرْضَ بِمَا شَرَعَ اللَّهُ وَأَحَلَّهُ وَأَنْ تُسَلِّمَ بِهِ he said, what is incumbent upon every Muslim to be pleased with what Allah has legislated and made lawful. Never try to say that's haram, it's oppression. Now you're saying that Allah is oppressing you? Now I understand that some men, they oppress themselves and oppress their first wife or wives because they don't do it the right way. Yeah, that's bad. We're not talking about certain what what happened here, incidents here and there. We're talking about Allah legislates something, it is good for you. It is good for the society. It is good for everyone. But I understand, sometimes you find a brother has no job. He's not even taking care of the first household. He just want to, like, for his desires, want to marry another woman. That's bad. And the mistake is perpetrated by the woman themselves. Because they're the one that accepts such a person. You see? She knows the man has no job, has problems with the first household, and she still accepts him. She's like, Allah, it's okay, I have a job, brother. Two weeks later, big problem. She don't want him. I want a khula. And then three weeks, a week later, she's pregnant. She finds out she's pregnant. Oh, she want to go back to him. It's a big mess. Why? Because people, they don't want to learn the deen and do what is right. So the Shaykh says it is incumbent upon every Muslim to be pleased with what Allah legislates and what Allah made lawful and to comply with that. Okay? But also the men, like I said, they have to do it the right way. It's not like because uh, Allah says it's permissible for the man to marry one, two, three, four, that he just go ahead and marry four, like some ignorant people do. In one week, he married three already. But he has no place to go himself. Nothing. He has no job. No, I don't know how they do this. They're playing games. It's different if the woman, if this man is righteous and, mashallah, struggling, but they have money and they just want him because he has righteousness, that's different. But if they expect from him to take care of them and to pay the bills, but he has no job and problems happen and, and it will reflect on the community, on the society, rather it reflects on the da'wah, on Islam itself. Because they start fighting and she has non-Muslims families and he has non-Muslims parents and families and then they're like, you calling us to Islam, look at you guys. Fighting, you going to the court, this, child support. Problems, uh, why you? We don't want that, you see. That's Allah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَ إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْسِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدَّ اللَّهُ دَلَالَ الْمُبِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the meaning of what Allah says in English, it is not for a believing man or a believing woman that when Allah and his messenger وسلم, decreed upon a matter, that they will have a choice within themselves, subhanAllah. You don't have, you don't come with another opinion. Allah says, yeah, I know the ayah, but come on, brother, we live in America. You know what? We have to do what we got to do. This is a believer. You got to do what you got to do. Astaghfirullah. A woman, she knows the ayahs of the hijab. And the ahadith of the hijab. But then she don't want to cover. Why? I don't know, man. I got to do what I got to do. You know? What you do? You're a Muslim. The man too. You're a man. You learn how to do it, how to act, what to do, what not. You try your best to do it. At least never go against it. Don't say, well, listen, we live here. It got to be another way. What do you mean? Another religion? Oh, the religion of Allah that should be applied by the believers Whatever they are, in Mecca or in Manhattan, doesn't matter. They are in the east or the west, in Arab country or not Arab country. Whatever you are, you apply the deen of Allah. But yes, we understand that none of us are perfect. Some of us, we wrong ourselves. But that's one thing. But opposing what Allah legislates, that's a totally different thing. And that's worse. Opposing, it's worse. Not complying due to negligence desires, weakness of Iman, that's a, that's a bad thing. But you can ask Allah for forgiveness. You can repent. But those who oppose and they say, no, no, this shouldn't be. Why women should cover? Come on, man, it is a free country, free time, free woman should do, nobody should tell her. It's not nobody, it's her Lord, the one who created her. <laughs> and fashioned her in the best form. He's the one who chose for her what's good for her. And beside the points, I mentioned this point of the hijab, covering is good. Ask those people who they say, no, woman covering is bad. Tell them when you buy a burger, a cheeseburger, you make an order, a delivery, and then the delivery guy bring you the cheeseburger in his hand with no wrapper or nothing. He just came, hey, mister, you ordered a couple of cheeseburgers? Here they hear, like, what do you mean? Where's the box? Why are they not wrapped? He, don't, don't worry, it's box. Look, women are not wrapped, women are not covered. Just, he's going to take it. Is he going to take it? No way, he's going to say, take it back, man. You cannot even spend five cents, a lollipop. Those same people who they like, oh, women, they don't have to be covered. Covering is oppression, it's bad. Hmm? When they go take their uh, little ones to buy them a, a lollipop, and there is a lollipop that has no wrapper on it, do they take that one? Are they going to take that one? Why they don't take it? Even if it's that, for example, let's say that's a, a watermelon flavor, and that's what the boy wants, right? And that's the only flavor rest in there. All of them is a, like a apple cider, I don't know what. Huh? <laughs> Are they going to tell him, oh, take it? They said, no, son, you have to change your, uh, what do you call it? Your uh, flavor today. No, no, there's, there's a watermelon right there. Yeah, but, but there is no wrapper on it. Can't buy you something that is not, have no wrapper exposed like that. That's Allah, salam alayhi. You see what I'm saying? Hmm. So you sisters, you don't supposed to be covering only because your father, your husband. If you're doing it for that reason, yeah, that's a problem. You're doing it to please Allah. Okay? And if somebody oppress you, give them these examples. Hmm? Somebody bring you pizza just like that in his hand. Here's your pizza, man. Pepperoni, halal, pepperoni, beef, okay? He's going to say, uh, that's wrong. So wh what's wrong? I'm nothing wrong. You order pizza, here's a pizza. It's beautiful. Yeah, but where's the box? No need. No need box. Just take it. It's not you taking it. No, you have to come covered. And Why covering? What's the problem? It's going to save it. Come on, man, I don't know who touched it, who looked at it, who breathed on it. Oh, so those women too. <laughs> They're out there naked, out there in the streets. <laughs> huh? SubhanAllah. 
Another uh, mistake, عدم طاعة الزوج والإساءة إليه وعدم التأدب معه. Another mistake that some of the women, they fall into, and we'll bring in this so that our sister pay attention, take serious notes, and correct themselves, and try to help other women. One of the mistakes that women, some women fall to, they get married and they disobey their husbands. They don't want to obey him. Whatever the husband says, like, who are you? You got nothing to tell me, brother. All right? I ain't going, I ain't going to do anything. I'm a free woman. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And then they be bad to them and they talk bad to him. SubhanAllah, the way they talk to him, insult some women, even insult their husbands. And this is a big mistake. It is in Kaban, يجب على المرأة أن تطيع زوجها بالمعروف ويحرم عليها معصيته ولا يجوز لها الخروج من بيته إلا بإذنه. It is strictly, actually it is obligatory upon the woman to obey her husband. But in that which is good, anything that is good and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislate and it is good, her obeying her husband in that, that's good for her. Because Allah is pleased with her and he gives her a lot of good deeds. And it's, it's strictly forbidden for her to disobey her husband in that which is good. So much so that it's not permissible for a woman to leave her house without the permission of her husband. Woman don't just keep going here and there. No, she want to leave, she ask her husband. Listen, I got to go visit my mother today. Alhamdulillah, if it doesn't involve no traveling and it's okay, yeah, he should. He should, yeah, okay, go ahead, give her salam, inshallah. You know what? I'm going to come and pick you up after, after work, inshallah. We're going to come and spend some time together. But if the husband, for whatever reason, he says, no, I, I won't, it's not a good idea for you to go uh, today, she shouldn't have a problem and give him attitude and don't cook, nothing, and give him attitude. He come home like he's coming to a roommate who he drank his milk by mistake. You know how sometimes you have roommates and you drink their juice by mistake and they look at you funny for a couple of weeks? They don't like you to go next to, to the fridge? Whenever you go to the kitchen, they're like, oh, well, watch out, brother. You don't want, you want to come home to a roommate? No. He said yes, say jazakallahu khairan. He said no, say jazakallahu khairan. And call your mother and tell her, Ma, I can go with you in the other place, inshallah, another time. That's it. And Allah is. So don't lose the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لو كنت آمرا أحدا أن يسجد لأحد لأمرت المرأة أن تسجد لزوجها. Look at the great right of the husband over his wife. The Prophet ﷺ, the best of mankind, who does not speak out of his desires, the one that we are supposed to obey him, his obedience is an obligation, not an option. Okay? He said, if I was to order any person to prostrate to any other person, I would certainly order the woman to prostrate for her husband. Okay? So we do not prostrate for people. We prostrate for Allah because that's an act of worship. But this highlights the great haq of, of, of the husband. So therefore, the right that the husband have over his wife is a great one. Obeying him is an obligation. Obeying him is an obligation. Of course, women have a right, because now I don't tell, we're talking about this point. Women, they have rights, and the husband too, that they have to be nice to the women and stuff, okay? Aynam. That's why, subhanAllah, if a man, if a man wants a woman that cannot do this and don't give him hard time and all that, then he has to, he has to make the right choice. He has to go for the woman that have the religion. Some man, he just want to like, he already want a woman with a curly hair and blue eyes. That's all he wants. Find me one. Okay, she's a Christian. No problem. I teach her the religion. She just took shahada. No problem. Alhamdulillah. I will teach her. Teach her what? She's, she's on the madhab of the khawarij. No problem. I will teach her salafiya. Because he's following his desires. Whereas the Prophet ﷺ, he tells us, Choose the one that have the religion. The religion meaning not just she's a Muslim by affiliation and she has no clue who her Lord is. She don't know her religion. She don't know her prophet. Nothing. 
This is a woman, alhamdulillah, that she has iman. She's upon the sound aqidah. She loves Allah. She loves the Messenger, sallallahu Because a woman that loves Allah, all you need to do is tell her Allah said. She's like, Allah said? In the Quran? Jazakallah. Allah said, that was my mistake. I apologize. I'll never do that again. A woman that fall a mistake, uh, look at you funny, said something, or argue, you tell her, Ya bin, Ya, 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 ya Mu'mina, who oh, believe in woman. The Prophet, sallam, he's the one who said this, not me. Really? He said that? Jazakallah khair, and I will never argue with you on this point again, you see? Because she believes in Allah. She loves Allah, she loves the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. نعم فقال فما بال بعد النساء تهمل في واجب زوجها ولا تطيعه بل قد تنام وزوجها غير راض عنها he said since this is the case why some women subhanallah they hurting themselves they harming themselves and she thinks she's harming giving hard time to the husband you're giving hard time to yourself why some women they neglect the right of the husband don't obey him insult him fight with him so much so that some women, they even go to sleep while the husband is not pleased with them. And that's very bad. Very bad for a woman to go to sleep and her husband is not happy with her. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, ثلاثة لا تجاوز صلاتهم آذانهم وذكر منهم امرأة باتت وزوجها عليها ساخر Three people that they won't benefit from their salat. They pray, but they don't get the benefit. And he mentioned from them a woman that her husband Go to sleep while he is unhappy with her. Mm. So women should, if 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 anything happen and she has a disagreement with her husband and and he make her ha- whatever or she make him unhappy and then yes, take five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour, but then you gotta come before you go to sleep. Come to him and say, I'm sorry, alhamdulillah, I was no, I was thinking, do it for yourself. You want to go to sleep like that while your husband is is unhappy with you, that's not good for you. Another example, another uh, mistake is that التقليل من الإنجاب والسعي لتحديد النسل لغير ضرورة Some women, she just, uh, I don't know where she get this from, she just want to like, uh, look, two boys or one boy and girl, that's it, or two girls, and that's it. And now she wanna go to the doctors and do some operation or put a device or whatever, no more children, brother, that's it. She will decide. Huh? With no necessity, there is no necessity for her. It's not like she's sick or whatever, no. Sheikh Al-Bandi, Rahmatullah, he said, هذا الذي يحدد نسلا بدون سبب مشروع أراه أحمق إن لم يكن كافرا بالقضاء والقدر. The Sheikh says, Sheikh Albani said, the one who who put limit to his children, so this is enough, without any valid reason, whether he said he's a foolish or a person who doesn't believe in the qada and the qadar. He said, because the one who they said, look, or three and that's it. Hmm? Three. Once Allah gave them three children, no more. He said, this person now, he become 50 years old. He doesn't think about like, for example, death. He doesn't think about like, for example, a storm comes and take him and his children, or his children actually. Uh, They die in accident, for example. Storm take them, and now he's He's with no children. After all this, towards the end of his life, when he's count the most, he has no children. Hmm? And beyond the point the Sheikh says, those who they, they, they think like this, they don't think about the Qadr of Allah. And that everything happened by Allah's leave, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't want to live their lives according to what Allah likes. They want to do it their way instead of being happy of the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Another mistake that the women fall into أن أن تظن المرأة أنها غير مسؤولة أمام الله عن رعيتها في بيتها وتظن أن ذلك المسؤولية الرجل وحده. Another mistake some women they think like everything in the house the, the education of the children their upbringing it's only on the man not on her she has no role or no responsibility whatsoever but the prophet sallallahu says kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati all of you are ra'in shepherd and responsible as relate to your flock fal imam ra'in wa huwa mas'ulun an ra'iyati the ruler is responsible of the the entire Ummah that under his rulership. Likewise, the man as related to his family. And the Prophet said, Well, Mar'atu Kadalik, the woman, she has a responsibility in the house of her husband. Aina. فعندما ترى زوجها يحضر في بيتها المنكرات التي تهدم أسرتها لا تبالي بذلك ولا تنصحه باستمرار ولا تنكر عليه فهذا خطأ كبير منا. Mention an example. Some women are like, Look, whatever happened, it's on the husband. I don't care. So that's why when they see the husband bringing bed, like television and, and the dish, satellite dish, this, that, magazines, mixing, she's like, that's on him, I don't care. No, she should care. This is a big mistake. You should tell your husband, brother, you're, uh, this is no good for us. This is not going to keep us on a journey, you know, safe to the journey to the hereafter. Can that same woman now, that same woman, when her husband is driving and start drinking alcohol, getting high, or he's, he's driving and he has a, a video, what do you call it? DVD player in front of him, and he's watching movies and clips, and he's driving, going 80, 80 miles an hour. This say 65, okay? What's she going to say? She's going to say, I don't care. If somebody says, hey, your husband is watching movies and driving, that's dangerous. I don't care. That's on him. I don't care. If he goes to the ditch, you're going with him. And everybody's going down. And likewise in the house. If the husband starts bringing all haram in the house and the, the wife in advising him, she can't say, I don't care. That's on him. If this house want to go down, let it go down. But you live in the house. Your children live in the house. But of course, the woman, she should uh, address these things, alhamdulillah, in a nice way. Hmm? In a nice way and uh, talk to him nicely because some men, they get miffed and offended. She should tell him, look, Jazakallah khairan for what you do. There's a lot of good things you do for us, for me, the children. May Allah reward you. But alhamdulillah, stick to the halal, brother. Don't mix haram and halal, okay? I don't see you bringing, you know, bleach and milk in the same jar. No, you put this in here, and you're right. <coughs> All right, so hey. So the same thing. Don't mix the halal and the haram. Alhamdulillah. Quran, this. No, we don't mix Quran with music and sunnah with bid'ah. Alhamdulillah. If he listens to her, that's a good thing for everybody, okay? And that's Allah, assalamu alaikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. And we stop here inshaAllah ta'ala. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslim al-kathira.